Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at equivalent expressions and figuring out if we have equivalent expressions. So equivalent expressions are any expressions that are equal when they are in simplified form. They represent the same thing. They might just look different when you are initially presented with the problem. So a couple of examples we're going to go through. First example here, it says determine if the two expressions below are equivalent, show your work. All right, so we have this expression right here, negative 8n squared minus 3n uh, times 4n plus 6. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my order of operations and I am going to simplify this. I am going to distribute, I am going to combine like terms, I'm going to do whatever I need to to put this in simplified form. So I know I have subtraction, I know I have multiplication, and I have whatever's going on inside the parentheses. If I think about order of operations, order of operations says I should start with the parentheses. So if I look at 4n plus 6, these are not like, I cannot do anything with them. So now I'm going to look to do my multiplication next, which means I am going to distribute negative 3n to these two terms. So negative 8n squared minus, so 3n times 4n would be 12n squared. Uh, negative 3n times 6 is negative 18n. And now what I want to look for is any like terms to combine. So like terms have the same variables in them. Well, all three of my terms have the variable n, which is great. Um, but they also have to have the exact same exponents. So this n squared is like to this n squared. So these two terms I can combine, but the minus 18n, so the negative 18n here at the end, that's not like to the other two because it does not have the same exponent. So these first two terms are like, let's go ahead and add them up, negative 20n squared minus 18n. So that's the simplified form of the expression on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what's going on with the expression on the right. So I have negative 5 whoops, uh, times 2n plus 3, all being squared, plus 6 times 7 plus 5n. A lot of stuff going on with this problem. You want to be careful that you take your time, show your work. So for this particular problem, order of operation tells me I should look at my parentheses first. So inside the parentheses, 2n plus 3, I cannot do anything with that to simplify it. They're not like. Uh, this set of parentheses is 7 plus 5n. Again, I cannot do anything with that. They are not like. But what I can do now is look at my power. So remember that to square something means to multiply it times itself. And you can take a moment and basically rewrite the exponent as simply a multiplication problem. Okay. Now we've got multiplication, and somewhere over here in the middle we've got a plus sign. Uh, multiplication is going to come first. One thing I want you to be careful about when you're doing this problem, especially with this negative 5 in front. Negative 5 is going to get multiplied at times one of these two factors, not both. Okay, so if we take negative 5 times this first term, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so negative 5 here, we're going to distribute. And there, right there. So negative 10n minus 15. I'm going to go ahead and leave that in parentheses because that will help me remember that I need to multiply now this factor times this factor, okay? So plus, uh, because this has nothing to do with that first set of the problem, I can go ahead and distribute here. So let's see what that's, 42, whoops. So just 42 plus 30n, okay? Now we're going to take this uh, binomial here times this binomial here. I'm going to change color just to make it really obvious what I'm doing. So I'm going to take this first term here, negative 10n times 2n, so negative 20n squared. Then I'm going to take negative uh, 10n times 3, so negative 30n. 
Uh, negative 15 times 2n would be negative 30n, and negative 15 times 3 is negative 45. The other terms in this problem have not changed. All right, I ran out a little bit of room there, so there's the n. Okay, <laughs> after all of that work multiplying, and that was a lot of work, I would like to look to combine some like terms. Because right now, clearly this mess written here in green is not equal to what's written in red on the left. Okay, so let's look for some like terms here. Um, the negative 20n squared, there is no other term with n squared in it, so you cannot combine that with anything else. I do have a negative 30n here, a negative 30n here, and a plus 30 here. So negative 30 minus 30 would be negative 60. Negative 60 plus 30 would be negative 30n. And then last but not least, if I look at my negative 45 and a positive 42 here, that would get me negative 3. Okay. So at this point, I can absolutely say that these two expressions are simplified. But I haven't yet answered the question. Because the question says, determine if the two expressions below are equivalent. Show work. I have shown my work that these two expressions are simplified. Uh, however, if the two expressions below are equivalent, not equivalent. Okay. Now, obviously, you can see they do share a negative 20n squared, negative 20n squared. That's great. But having a negative 18n is not the same thing as having negative 30n, and this negative 3 matches up to nothing in this uh, answer on the left. So these are not equivalent expressions. Okay. But the idea here, excuse me, the idea here is that you simplify your expressions, and then check to see if they are equivalent. We're going to do another example. I'm going to slide down here. This one is um, slightly more complicated. Also, there we go. So in example two, I've given you an expression up here, okay, so this expression, and I'm asking you out of these three expressions, which one is equivalent to this given one? So again, show your work. What we're going to do is actually simplify all four of these. Okay, Lots of practice with order of operation, lots of practice with distributive property, multiplying binomials, all of that. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and color kind of code these. Uh, first little problem that was given, I'm taking a look inside the parentheses, can't do anything, but I can distribute. So negative 3x times x times negative 5. So negative 3x squared plus 15x. I'm going to distribute this negative 3 here and here. So negative 3x minus 9. Last piece, as my uh, page is shifting here, this term in the middle, these two in the middle terms, uh, we can add those up. So negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. Okay, so this is the expression that we are trying to aim for. All right, this is what we're given, negative 3x plus 12x minus 9. And what I want to do now is start just simplifying the other expressions. All right, so I'm going to start on the left. Um, I've got nothing that I can do inside the parentheses, right, x minus 2. You can't do anything with it. But I do have a power of 2 here. Uh, we showed this in the uh, first example. So I'm going to just rewrite x minus 2 two times. So x minus 2 times x minus 2. And I'm going to start distributing. So this negative 3, I'm going to distribute here and here. But do not go any further than that. Okay. <laughs> and I need to be careful because when I distribute this, I'm going to have to do some more multiplication. So it's going to look a little weird, but I'm going to put a plus and then a times. I know that was weird. Uh, so let me see what's going on here. 3x plus 
6, and then x minus 2. So the negative 3 times x is negative 3x. However, this is now going to be multiplied with this piece. So that's why I want to make sure I keep those parentheses to show the multiplication. But this 3 in front was not going to be multiplied, so that's why I added that plus sign in there. A little weird, I know, but we've got to be sure that we're paying attention to our signs. All right, I'm going to do a whole bunch of distributive property here to multiply this out. So 3 plus. Now I can lose the parentheses because I'm actually multiplying the two factors together. So let's see what we've got here. Negative 3x squared plus 6x. Uh, now I need to multiply this 6 here, so plus 6x and minus 12. Okay, so combining like terms, collecting up all of our pieces here, we've got negative 3x squared. I've got positive 6x plus 6x, so that would be plus 12x. And then separately... I've got this minus 12 here and the positive 3 that we started with. Um, so that would be minus 9. Okay, so that's as simple as that problem gets. And if we compare it to the original one, negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 9, these answers are identical. Right? Every sign is the same. Every variable is the same. It is all the same. So yes, that expression is equivalent. I'm going to go ahead and circle that up. Okay. I'm also going to draw a little boundary line here. Uh, there we go. All right. So if I take a look at the middle problem here, if we look inside the parentheses, x minus 1, nope, can't do anything with that. Uh, x minus 3, can't do anything with that. So I'm going to start distributing. I'm going to take this negative 3, distribute here and here. So negative 3x plus 3. But now I need to take that factor and multiply it times x minus 3. Okay, so distributive property again. Uh, some of you may know this as FOIL, first, outside, inside, last. Uh, so let's see, negative 3x squared. That's my first term is my outside terms, plus 9x. Inside terms, plus 3x, and last terms would be minus 9. Uh, some like terms right in the middle. It's nice when that happens. So negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. Uh, hey, folks, we have another winner here. This is identical to what we were asked for. So because this one's identical, I'm going to go ahead and circle that one up. Okay, again, that's just because the direction said circle the expressions below that are equivalent. All right, let's see if third time's the charm, if we end up with all three of them being equivalent to the given. Okay, last problem here. Six times x plus 1 minus 3 times x minus 1 squared. Okay, order of operations. I'm going to look inside the parentheses x plus 1, I can't do anything, x minus 1, can't do anything, but I can take care of that power of 2. Okay, so 6 times x plus 1 minus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, uh, you are going to need to do distributive property, all right? So this first one here, we're going to take 6 and distribute here and here. So 6x plus 6. And this is, again, that kind of weird thing that's going to happen. I'm subtracting right now, okay, but I need to take this negative 3 and distribute it in. So I'm going to take negative 3, distribute here and here. It's going to be plus the negative 3 plus 3, x minus 1. All right. It's kind of weird when that happens. It only is going to happen when you have that negative sign where you've got to basically put in a plus sign that didn't exist originally. Uh, you can also think of it as, um, if you've ever learned subtraction, and I'm going to actually show this off to the side, uh, 4 minus 3 is the same thing as 4 plus negative 3. So that's kind of what we're doing here is instead of just having the negative, we're actually putting the plus sign back in the problem. But that's up to you for what makes sense. Uh, but I'm still not done distributing. 
So let's distribute a little bit more. Uh, let me get these first two terms down here. All right, 6x plus 6 plus negative 3x squared plus 3x, uh, it was negative 3 times negative 1, plus another 3x, and then minus 3. Okay, let's combine some stuff up here. Negative 3x squared it has no like terms to it. Uh, I've got 6x here and a 3x and another 3x here. Okay, make sure I've got all my terms. So 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 3 makes a positive 12x. And last but not least, we've got a plus 6 here as a constant and a minus 3 here as a constant. So 6 minus 3 would be positive 3. And that last one doesn't match because every single piece of this problem has to match every single piece of the given problem. Yes, we have negative 3x squared. Yes, we have 12x. We unfortunately do not have a minus 9. We have a plus 3 down here. So this one is the last problem that we just did is not equivalent, so there's nothing to do there. You don't need to circle anything. Obviously, it's not equivalent. Uh, you also don't need to say anything about why it's not. Your work justifies your answer. So I hope this has helped a little bit with equivalent expressions, but ultimately what I really hope it's helped with is some of your ability to simplify these expressions. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.